was this again? Evidence from a past case of Bedsworth is brought back to his office by Gant's request. Um, what was this? ID record. Victim's note. Autopsy. Parking stub. Let's go with this one. It's completely unrelated. I mean... <laughs> Uh, he said something had to be unrelated. Let's just go with that one. I haven't used it yet. This is how we moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? Well, what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the, the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Oh! I was asked to go to, uh, by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted to keep it at the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbing, I brought this back to the prosecutor's office. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I, I. The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. Detective Goodman's body was carried to the trunk of Edgeworth ca Edgeworth's car. Yes, unless of course you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to carry the evidence from a clo closed case? There's only one possible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lena Sky. Order. What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal from the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Miss Scott Star took from the uh, at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It's a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gam, please say something. I believe. Your time's up. My time's up. Sorry, Rido, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're going to make it in time for the early bird special. But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify, I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman? That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I'd like to dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright, that Damon Gunn is current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, Your Honor, do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Smith Sky dispose of the body. Do I have any concrete proof? No. It's no you showing evidence of it. I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. See you, Audrey. In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? I don't gamble unless the stakes are high. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, OG, I'll leave the rest to you. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright, this is an affront to a senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Yeah, they can go suck a bag of fucking dicks. What? Objection! Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth, another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gan has invoked his right to refuse to testify. 
Just does someone else, one more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Ryan, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but she can't ju we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor, the defense calls forth. Give me Miss Lena Sky. I always like hearing her talk. Uh, the defendant, uh, Miss Lena Sky. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well, the court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we, fi 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the test defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Hold on. Hmm? Chief Gant, I thought you were going on it to you. Listen good, Lena. He's talking to Lena. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claim, there will be a terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, uh -huh. this isn't good. Um, this is also illegal? <laughs> of course you'd never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. All right then, I've got a lunch date to meet. Um, that's a crime? <laughs> okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. I mean, that's straight up blackmail right there. Using his position to influence a witness. Okay, whatever. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. Then Chief. He's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gunshu. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, patrolman Gumshu. Ah, oh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that Tom Nada girl you used to work with. Did he mean... Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of mo moves now. I'd rather you know, I, I don't have enough money to pay you. Chief Gant's done that again. How is it always to get it? He always gets the upper hand. It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm. Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks? What do you mean? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything, too? Oh, hey. You. Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in a medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. Oh, so she heard everything that's been going on. Uh, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I must feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah, now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone knew her or said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean to follow Chief Gant's orders? She must have shut herself up deep inside to force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. That was all my fault. It's all because I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I see. Well, we'd better get back to it. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lena tells the truth. Let's go right. It's time to end this. Oh, hopefully, I will dive straight through the ending and not absolutely crash and burn and catch on fire. I can smell the end. February 25th, 2.21 p.m. Now then, 
Will the defendant miss Lena Sky please Sky please take the stand? Miss Lena Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done in these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Guy. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lena, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your rea relationship with Gand. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gand. She is going to be... So hard to break. I worked alongside again for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motive was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lena... If this is true, then that means Chief Gana has nothing to do with this. That's why I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. What if she's telling the truth? She's not. <laughs> I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Gladly. Let's go ahead and press on all of these parts. How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good coming from the same st school as Mia. Damon Gant was a respectable, was a respectable detective. That's why. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. You sure about that? No, I do think, but think about it, Miss Guy. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me so as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. Not if it is the defendant or the person on the witness stand. Then everything's fair game. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And? I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. What she did was uh, justified self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day, all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lena. So that's why you fabricated evidence two years ago. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor awarded a knife was stuck in this bag. What? But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change the statement. You mean Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dart? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It's probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, pointed it inside the wound, and moved the body. You pointed the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's body, and then moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. 
My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for that it's sake for others. Why'd you move the body? When you showed up at the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Guy moved the body. The piece of the jar shattered during the event uh, threatened my plan. Pieces of the jar, you mean? Yes, that uh, wretched jar Mr. Wright showed us earlier. In order to show that Dar committed the crime, I felt it would be more uh, expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there is more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. Can I go back then? Broke off the... let's uh... So, there's a couple things. We could probably do this one, that it was still fine during it, but we could probably just use the whole jar itself. See if this works. Miss Guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered. I guarantee, like, what it is, he wrote down the name and then the jar, like, fell. Or that they broke the jar because it had her name on it. He took the bloody piece and put it in there. Just to, like, hold blackmail over her for later on. That's fucked. If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been useless. Even so, I'm compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. Contradiction in my testimony? You testified and I quote, the pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on that jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to raise message from the jar, it must not have yet have been broken uh, before he died. Ah. He couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Order. Your Honor, it would appear. More information is needed to arrange regard to this jar and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are. About the truth towards which you, uh, we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well, the witness may now continue her testimony. Jar and message in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. But you didn't. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message of blood? I wasn't Chief Prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Message in blood. So the jar was already broken. It was a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks feeble as the defense's claim. Case. Not as feeble as the judge's judgment. You're an ace detective who never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally, I would have. But it was dark in the room, and I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No. 
If I had, though, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. Elena, you do that for me? It seems you two might went make up yet. <laughs> anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. I wiped away the blood to be safe. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you mean? If you really thought Joe Dark killed a prosecutor marshal, you wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lena, I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. Didn't get all of them. Fragments were large, so I'm sure I got all of them. Well, I know for a fact you didn't. But I'm gonna press just in case. Because I could see this game fucking me. But how could you see with the power on? It should have been pitch black in the office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright, even though I always carry a pocket light within a camera with me. Even I carry my bottle of emergency luminol whenever I go. Wherever I go. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. But yet you couldn't see the blood on it? I'm, I'm gonna fucking present it. Because you didn't get every piece. You got all but one. This guy, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of the jar in Chief Gant's safe. In Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off him. He got there first. And he gathered evidence, hid them, and then made her think that she got everything, so he could blackmail her. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on that scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces were too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. What about an ace attorney? Would they miss it? They may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Huh, can you believe that? Shut up. <laughs> Have you forgotten your honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. Hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant at the time he was looking. For dark downstairs, besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? That's the whole point, to get blackmail. The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? Mm -hmm. No! He's probably got fucking dirt on him. Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar. And he proceeded to pr purposely hit one of the broken pieces. Question, what is this action called? Fabrication. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lena Skye believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Leading, lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma. And here's the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the chief's puppet. Hey, anyway, you might want to not bite your thumb that hard. No, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore uh, for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Hmm, I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the, tr the truth. You're a piece of shit. Wait a minute. 
What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is there something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lena, maybe right away. Right all, 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 what? Right all way? What do you mean? So when to do, so you do tell foul lights then, right, Mr. Wright? Miss Skye, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of the prosecutor, of Prosecutor Marshall, might also be a lie. I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Guy, if you will. Tell me I was right, tell me I was right, tell me I was right. I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination uh, may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify. About what I really saw. Alright, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I and Chief Gant helped me remo remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor sword? You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lena must not have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lena. Lena said she gave it to you this morning. Well, I mean, it would have to be this thingy. But it, I can't see anything. It has to be in the book. I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. Check. Well, I mean... Anything, anything, anything. Ooh, right there. Enhance. I can see some. Actually, no, that doesn't look like anything. Never, never mind. Can I not crack this fucker open. Oh, examine. Hey, a little picture. Wow, that's a fucking god awful picture. Um, hey, there's a picture here. Hmm. Oh, why? This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. That's because I contacted contacted Criminal Affairs only after I rearranged the scene. Lena's picture inserted into the court record. Mr. Wright, that piece uh, cut out from his vest, could that be? The cloth we found inside she can't save. What's this? It's a handprint. Cloth. If it had finger, it had fingerprints on it. Who, whose ever fingerprints those are, must be the real murderer. But those fingerprints, they're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mister Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross examination. Well, we know he tried to alter the crime scene first, but <laughs> don't want to actually present that cloth. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall impaled up. Um, excuse you? Oh, God damn it. Come now, Edgy. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gann? What well, now? You may want to make me out as the bad guy, too. If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. Nope. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined testimony. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. This must be the risk the judge was talking about. Just sit back and relax, and enjoy the sound of the no noose tightening around your neck. 
Hey, aren't you supposed to be out to lunch, buddy? Ah, uh, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all of the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean, you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't, but someone does. Someone. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves you knocked over Neil Marshall causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? No, I don't. If I show that piece of evidence now, I'm as sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now, and if you try to conceal anything, you will be on the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I'd better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Prosecutor Marshall? Fuck no! That's stupid as hell. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Gan? You, you opened my safe. I know you took what I was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. I don't know what you're talking about. I just got a jar piece. That's all I got from there. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut off for some reason. You mean you had this and you're safe? What? That means you, the chief of police, concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Dude, you're admitting to fucking crime. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gal, Rido. The gall. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean you admit it? Oh, not again. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lena. So you really were manipulating her. I knew Lena. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister, then uh, that when she saw the scene, she would ask me for my aid. So you assisted in this guy. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife, tip, in the victim's body, and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When we rearranged the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. I did this before Lena arrived at the scene. Two pieces of evidence. You mean these items in your safe. But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance. I was sure my plan would work, but I was always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? Who do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hid the most illegible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lena to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? Ho ho ho. Some people just don't know how to, when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, for be being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, move Rido. You should have shown it uh, then, before it was too late. 
It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. I'm not going to. No, it's too late to show the evidence now. Besides, even if I did, it just exposed that poor girl's fingerprints. Right, think hard over the circumstances. The circumstances. I'm talking about then and now. There's one major difference between the two. Were you waiting for that difference? So, after I figured out my point, fuck. Mr. Wright, this is your only chance. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright, then let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. I don't want to fucking show this. Ugh. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut off this piece of uh, vi the victim's vest. Oh yes, at last you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. That must have been a strong impact for, for it to have been left so clearly. You mean, it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho oh, oh. ho. You're as slow on the uptake as ever worthy. What? Think about it. Rido had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would he that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints were, are on that. Mr. Wright, do you, re you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belongs, it must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well, I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. The person whom these fingerprints belong to are... They are, they are in this. Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? Sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Ho oh, ho ho. You're really something, Rido. You knew this girl did it all along, and yet you tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true, tra tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you, you monster? Miss Guy? You knew the, the whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. Miss Guy, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Huh. Well, I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Can't go your tongue? Are you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Pro Prosecutor Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who really the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What a contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is. There's no blood on it. He cut it off and then just, like, pressed hit her hand onto it when she was passed out. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, that could, what could, possi could possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical opinion ends here. Behold, this piece of cloth that contradicts this cloth, this piece of evidence. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Guy took. Take a good look at it. There's no blood. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth. Christine. 
Wait. There's no blood on it. Arrgh. Since Emma's uh, sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword. This is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Skye? Picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the arm armor sword. Then to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's desk, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. He then broke the jar on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lena believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of victim's cloth. This victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? Though the very act of creating insurance. You proved that you were the actual murderer. No! It's finished. Good game. It was fun. Damn, bud. Ha. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. That was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order, order. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Audrey. Earlier old Rido here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do not ha you do have conclusive evidence. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence that I can present at this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth uh, ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Ha 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 ha. Did then you actually think you could best me in court? Looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gaines' claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, true. Illegal evidence cannot be used to, to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright, it's not illegal. It seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposely and illegally concealed that piece of cloth? I did not. Certainly. I refused to present evidence at one point. So the evidence is illegal. No. It isn't, Mr. Gann. Hmm? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? I had to prove that it had, it had relevance to the case. It's been proven to be relevant to the case now. There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Audrey, don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't let him. There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well, let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct as if it was not in violation of the law, then do so. Here we go. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, MS Guy's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying. I did not have approval from the police department. Two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case in court and trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time, it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Na -na -na -na. Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? 
That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gann. You shouldn't have said that you cut it off yourself. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. Got a little full of yourself. No! It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. And only the only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could have been. Damon Gant. The killer was you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Jesus Christ. Um. I know I should have gotten rid of him. The good for nothing scum. For two years he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Hey, Marshall's good boy. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star and then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman. Yes, that's right. If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't ma know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden, he had to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many unanswered, qu too many questions left unanswered. He told me to open the evidence room and take it out. It's not too late, I'll hand this to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a little panicked too. I had a bad feeling about it, but never knew it would come to this. That's when I saw it, that accursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. You'd only increase the amount of blood and you couldn't finish what you started. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I was wiping it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize mis my mistake. Detective Gumshoe's bloody handprint. I used to be known as the crime computer, but everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. And he put the body in my car. I'm sorry, we couldn't think of any other way to move the body. We broke the trunk, but then what's the big deal? You pulled down a lot more than us detectives. Urgh. You know how much it gets to fucking replace that shit? What does this have to do with anything? You're horrible. How could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had so as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I feel bad for having to do it. I couldn't sit around and pick and choose what to take. Well... You left the jar fragment in gloves. Yeah. Looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They did all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They did their jobs well, as much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, were they? What are you doing in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. One day you'll understand. If you want to take them out on you alone, you'll figure out what's needed. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Audrey. One. 
Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, David Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and example of those to the on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Audrey. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Rito here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. You see, if I listen carefully, I can hear it right now. The sound of a new beginning. I just hear clapping. Oh, hey, Lena, how's it going? There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gan betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Guy, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell you everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gan help me forge evidence until, up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Guy. I couldn't get you out of all of the, your trouble. My, my. What high standards you have. For a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Guy. And to you too, Mr. Edward. You've suffered every bit as much as I have these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Hmm. It was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Right to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edward. Stop it. I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems a good self-examination is order for all of us. Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor? You're innocent of murder. However, although the chief blackmailed you, the fact that you still act as his accomplice, a trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of those heavy chains. Don't suppose I'll get more of her. Oh, well, this trial has gone on for far, far too long. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant miscellaneous guy. Not guilty. Let's go. Because I'd love to see more of her. And Emma, why not? This is all the court is adjourned. They're interesting enough. They have a nice dynamic. At long last, it's finally over. Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for mur a murder she didn't convict. No, that's not it. Just now after the trial ended. And see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have these last few days. You've done well. It's a nice smile. You know, I did my best too. But Lena didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Jesus Christ. Oh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Ah, oh, Detective Gumtree, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all around while you're on duty. And on top it off, call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Hey, line up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope. Not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd just like to see someone. Oh, hey, Lena. How's it going? Lena? Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell you if you don't want Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day two years ago... ...was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. 
All I could think about was getting you from get keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis, I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake, but now I realize I was wrong. I changed that after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distan dis distancing myself, but I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I, I was scared. Scared of what you'd look at me with the, that you would look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But since you were only doing it for me. No. I turned my back on you that day, and hiding what I believed to be the truth. I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm, I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Oh, Emma. Emma. That is, that's wholesome. I, I needed that. No one can change the past. And only one thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in doing so, we can find the way back uh, to our path. And once we've found our path, we can move on from our past mistakes together toward a brighter future. That is a sweet image. At least that's what I felt looking at these two sisters make up. Absolutely adorable. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. Me? Thank you both for all you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday, I hope. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. Where was he hiding? I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realized today that I can't change my own mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth, not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. Not even close. One day you'll understand if you want to take them on alone, you'll figure out what's needed. I don't, nah, you're different, Edgeworth. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime alone, who one needs a weapon. It's scary, but I've been thinking the same thing for quite some time now. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime, but they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime alone, who needs a weapon? You, one needs a weapon. That may be right, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You were working together with Mr. Wright, and because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? Oh, what? Oh, uh, y yeah. Is this a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lane is talking about. Evidence that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. Um, uh, what? Oh, oh, this evidence list. That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list and I had the other. A part we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth. 
If you'll excuse me, there's still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember. What happened in this trial, trial can either make or break you as a prosecutor. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe my thanks to you, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I'd better be getting back, too. Okay, I'll come visit you. It seems we both still have a lot to learn. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have and only just begun. Have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go drinking off just yet, pal. What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But, I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it might be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak out her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, I don't have any money. Mr. Wright, here's the one who will be footing the bill. Huh? What, you think I could afford with that with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh, huh, huh. Thank you, Mr. Wright, you're the best. Why is it? I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Since we're all here, why don't we all go together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Done. Oh my god. That took fucking too long. Oh my god. Uh, I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take a... Uh, she's a coroner. I think Emma will be pleased. As for me, this affair has been pretty much ended my days. Oh, hello. As of the prosecutor's office. She'll, I'll still manage to find my way back. Then I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. I'm just gonna fucking do this. Dick? I was fucking playing around. Yikes, I thought it was a goner for a moment there, in the end there. Though they overlook my authorization investigation of the police office. If they penalize you anymore, it'll be worse than firing you. Yeah, if that's what they said. It just goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. That's fucking wonderful. Stop being a dick. But this was a fun game. It was a fun little thing. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe in- I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner is keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show him though, someday I'm going to make it to the detective. Yes sir, then I'll be able to like be just like Dick Gumchu. No! It broke! Jake Marshall. 
Watch this, can't you see I'm trying to... having me a showdown with the steak lunch she prepared. Miss Tar managed to start to sneak this in for me. She's sending me one of the guards. Well, bellboy, let's talk... cowboy, let's talk what you did. You even gave Bambina back her job. Can't you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? I love Jake Marshall. Oh, that means Star is probably up next. Fuck. Yeah, she is. Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a me new meal on the lunch, the right away lunch. The top lawyer tastes a as a bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's about a hot seller around this time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. Fuck it. Localization. Good old Ben John. You did good, Ben John. John. Ah, uh, but I'm ready. Ready to go into the next game. Number two. I'll never forget what that young defense attorney lawyer said after the trial. Let's see what it was his name again. Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he's been doing uh, something or, or, or uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to go to, so I'd better be... Huh? Oh, no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. Thanks, Edgy. No, but anyways, I'm really uh, looking forward to getting into the second one. Ah, nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing Nick and his objections. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Maya, afternoon training is about to begin. Coming. Well, see you around, Nick. Like, I'm just really looking forward to that second one. See how it goes. Hopefully, uh, we'll see some familiar faces in there. Really hoping for some more skies. They were they were really fun. I like their addition. Yeah, I like the... They brought it something different to it, and I like it. It was a nice, interesting way they had a trial. Uh, Gumshoe, I mean, I could do without him, to be honest. Edgeworth, I hope he's there. I'll be really disappointed if he isn't. Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you your tea. Hmm. What's this? What's going on? God, I hope Edgeworth's in the next game. I'll be so disappointed if he's not. He was, he's so much fun. I like him. I like his personality. I like how he goes about stuff. Gant, he's going away for a while. Oh, hey, Emma. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lena, all I have to do is uh, open this book. See you when you get back. Fucking open the book. Open the book. Open the book. Don't know why I have to open the back cover over here. A little letter. Oh my god, that's so fucking cute. Absolutely adorable. Ah, thank you, Capcom. That was a fun game. Can't wait for the next one. That was really fun. I, I like that trial a lot. It's very, very unique. Oh, not much to continue, so that's where I'll call it an end for today. And uh, can't wait to start the second game. Don't even know what it's called. Probably should get that downloaded. And I'll start playing that and absolutely enjoy and the hell out of the second one. And then eventually the third one. Then I'll take a break. And then I got other stuff planned. Whew, a lot of stuff on the schedule to come. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I will be getting into the second one probably tomorrow, <laughs> to be honest. Always on the clock. So, hope to see you guys there, and enjoy.